But we all gained weight in the last few years, yes? Yes. Yeah. I uh, decided to want to try and lose a bit of weight, just the weight I gained in the lockdown, that was my plan. And most people, when they decide to lose weight, there's something that starts them off, spurs them on, kind of keeps them going. Maybe there's a holiday photo and they don't quite like how they look in it. Or maybe they're sitting in a bath of gravy and it's not even for children in need. <laughs> For me, it was when I sat on a public toilet and the sunny bin opened and I hadn't asked it to. <laughs> Did you want me? <laughs> no, but my arse cheeks seemed to disagree. <laughs> but I tried really hard, I tried really hard and I lost two stone, that's all right, isn't it? I lost two stone, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's very kind of you, thank you. I say two stone, it was the same half a stone four different times. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit if you tell them you've lost half a stone. Everybody knows just just two big dinners and a chocolate orange and the fuck has back on again, isn't it? <laughs> but I've always had a belly, even though I was much, much slim, I've always had a belly. I always get offended when people think that this is pregnant, like I would ever let a pregnancy get this far. No! <laughs> But I did a thing the January before last that I think a lot of people do, especially in January. I downloaded a diet app. Now, the phone I was using at the time was a thumb recognition phone. It didn't immediately recognize my thumb. It just kept juddering. And first of all, I thought my phone was just really clever. And it was like, it's a diet app. We've clearly been stolen. <laughs> and then I looked at my thumb, and it was just covered in biscuit. <laughs> So I licked the biscuit off, so I thought it might be my last biscuit in a while, and I downloaded the diet app. What came with the diet app was a WhatsApp group of other participants. It was open to all, but my group happened to be all women, and it was so we could support each other and help each other. Everybody knows diets are hard and a bit shit. Also in the WhatsApp group was a nutritionist who was no fun at all, it transpired. One of the women in the group asked a question of the rest of us, a perfectly reasonable question, especially on day one of a new diet. She said, I'm having trouble with my sweet craving. Can anybody recommend something that isn't bad for me but will help? And one of the other women responded almost immediately, and she said, I usually find a mug of hot water with one small drop of lemon works for me. And I just thought, I'm not going to make it to the end of the week. <laughs> my suggestion was going to be half a Twix. <laughs> And the nutritionist, she was called Poppy, of course she fucking was. <laughs> she said, can I just chip in? And I misread it, and I was like, chips, hooray, nom nom nom. <laughs> she said, just brush your teeth, that fixes everything. And I thought, that's so unhelpful. The only thing that would help is hunger, if I could eat me fucking toothbrush, because I'm so hungry right now. You daft cow. <laughs> mm, cows. Hum, 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 hum. <laughs> There were some recipes that came with the diet. I tried one of them. It was how to make banana pancakes out of almost no ingredients. The first time I tried them, just looked like vomit in a pan. Second time, managed to make them look a lot more like pancakes. And I was so excited and a little bit lightheaded from all of the hunger that when I ran from the kitchen to show my husband, I tripped and the plate smashed on the floor. But because it was a really low point in the diet for me, let's call it day two, <laughs> I ate them off the floor. And I had to check to see if the fragments of plate and cat hair had also ingested <laughs> counted as my sins for the week. <laughs> One of the women in the group got told off, told off as an adult, got told off for eating goji berries. If you've never had goji berries, it's like chewing elastic bands. She got told off because goji berries are full of natural sugar, not really allowed on this plan. She wasn't having coke or pops with cider poured on. She was having goji berries on her bran flakes. Some sad sprinkled on some more fucking sad. <laughs> I had eight years of my life without any pets, the longest I'd ever gone uh, because of the lifestyle of my job. And then my husband and I realised we were finally in a position where we could definitely look after a cat. And our friend's cat had just had kittens, so we locked a date in my diary when that kitten could leave his mum and come and live with us. It was locked in my diary. And my agent, she said, but it's the Queen's Jubilee. And I said, but it's a kitten. <laughs> and she tried all ways to persuade me, and in the end I just said, look, I don't care how good her tits are, I'm not fucking going. <laughs> Second last one. I said no to someone shoving a crunchy up my fanny. <laughs> now, I don't know when you last had a crunchy. You might not remember the chocolate is very thin and would have fizzled off in no time. <laughs> Even very angular cinder toffee, that would have hurt. <laughs> and also, I don't do adverts anyway. <laughs> Australia, I got a phone call from the fraud department of my credit card company inquiring why I was spending quite so much on my credit card. She said, can I check a couple of transactions with you? And I said, of course you can. 
The first one was a cash point withdrawal, and I had withdrawn the money, so that was all above board. The second one, she said, you spent £102 in a place called Holtz. And I went, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a chocolate shop. <laughs> and she went, £102! <laughs> For me. Because I was nowhere near Brad Pitt's cock. <laughs> but I did get a new nickname while I was out there. I've never had a nickname before. I've been called things, but that's different, isn't it? I think that's bullying. My nickname is the Cake Pigeon. It's whenever I walk past a cake shop. <laughs> walk past. Whenever I press myself up against a cake shop, I go, and puddings on stage, sometimes people bring cakes and puddings to shows for me, which is lovely, but can sometimes be a little bit weird. So a lady came up to me a few months ago. At the end of the show, she handed me a small round fruit cake, and she said, this is for you. And I said, that's lovely, thank you very much. What a nice thing to do. And she said, I'm sorry, it's just that. But it's all we had in. I said, have you been looking through your cupboards? It's not the fucking Harvest Festival, pet. <laughs> You bought a ticket, you can just come to the show. <laughs> Which really pissed off the woman behind her who was standing with a tin of fucking peaches. <laughs> but I was getting annoyed by my period. I've had my period for over 30 years. I've never wanted children, not a moment, not a flicker. I'm sure a lot of you have got kids and you're having a great time with them and that's smashing for you. It's not for me, it's not for me at all. The best way I can describe how annoyed I get every time my period starts is like this. Imagine you've got a friend at work, she's called Deborah. she's great. deborah has got a rabbit hutch and every month she cleans it out. Puts fresh bedding in, fresh water in the water bottle, fresh food in the food bottle. Looks spotless, amazing, spick and span. And you say to her, Deborah, are you ever gonna get a rabbit? <laughs> decided to do in order to help me relax is just to find things that make me happy because I think generally whatever makes you happy makes you relaxed and I thought at 35 that I knew everything that I liked but in the last 12 months I found two new things that I didn't know I liked the first one was courtesy of a nice lady on Facebook who said I understand that you like chocolate but I don't know if you know this fact that if you have a square of dairy milk and a square of galaxy at the same time <laughs> it's so good <laughs> that it makes you do sex noises. I mean, like, good ones. I don't mean like, oh, oh, get it out, get it out. <laughs> I can tell some of you are now working out your route home via a news agent. Please <laughs> said the show should be sponsored, because I'm telling you, oh, it's got to buy chocolate, the show's not sponsored. But if your future show is called Dairy Millican, <laughs> and maybe things have changed. Yeah. But it was about this time last year that I was worried about my family. Um, my mum and dad are both retired and both disabled. And I was worried about them sort of thinking before they put the heating on. You know, it was a very cold winter. Sort of thinking, can we afford it before they put the heating on? And I said, you know what, you've looked after me all these years, including the two. I moved back in after I got divorced. Never have kids, because I never probably fucking leave. <laughs> So maybe I could start giving you a bit of a hand. Maybe I could start paying your heating bill. Not happy, not happy. Very proud people, my parents. There was a lot of sort of wrestling went on. I mean, verbal. I wanted to have my dad on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> popping out hips willy-nilly. <laughs> and uh, they eventually agreed. They still weren't happy about it, but they agreed it's the most sensible option started to pay for the heating bill. Months later, I went to visit them. My dad opened the front door, and he was just wearing vest and pants. <laughs> in the afternoon, why haven't you got any clothes on? It's boiling in there. <laughs> and I heard my sister shout from the kitchen, we've never even been on holiday anywhere this hot. <laughs> but we had a very good upbringing, we always had loads of, we had loads of pets, we had loads of pets. Give us a cheer if you've got a pet. I'm very jealous. I'd love to have a pet. I don't have that kind of lifestyle. I'm away from home too much and it would be cruel. So me and my fellow, when we've got a bit of time off, like an afternoon off, we like to go to zoos and aquariums. But you can't always do that because those places are expensive and they take up a lot of time. So we have perfected the art of wandering round pets at home. <laughs> You've got to go in with a lot of confidence, you know. Like you could totally own a fish, you know. 
To be fair, I sometimes wander around baby clothes shops and I haven't got a baby, that's a lot weirder. <laughs> I always think I can pass as a new mum because I've got a bit of a belly and I always look knackered. <laughs> and if I think anybody's suspicious, I just lob a boob out. <laughs> that doesn't work in pets at home. <laughs> so the last time we were in pets at home, they had a special section to one side of animals that had been reduced. Just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> Reduced. It was one of the saddest things I think I've ever seen. They had a big rabbit in a hutch, much bigger than the other sort of sexy rabbits. <laughs> sexy is not the right word, is it? <laughs> Depends on the rabbit. <laughs> Thank you. And the big rabbit, to make it that little bit more heartbreaking, they'd written a sign for it in the first person. And the sign said, Hi, I'm Honey. I'm a little bit bigger than the other rabbits. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than the other rabbits. <laughs> Please take me home. <laughs> I thought you never expect to come face to face with a rabbit equivalent of your teenage self. <laughs> I didn't buy it. It's got to learn. pets when we were kids we had rabbits and budgies and hamsters and fish and dogs with loads of things but whenever they died we were never told that we were just told some story instead some lie anybody else have this yeah yeah, yeah. what lies were you told shout out oh. gone to a farm what animal was it love oh. a dog oh it's still in your voice isn't it flower dog <laughs> farm dog can't talk anymore <laughs> it was lady the other day she said uh, my rabbit never died I said, what? My rabbit never died. It's just sometimes a different colour. <laughs> and occasionally it was a guinea pig. <laughs> Thanks for watching. You know what would be great is if you liked and subscribed. I'm so needy. I'm so sorry. Uh, and why not come and see me live? And uh, the tickets are available at sarahwilkin.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.